in my online bubble, everything's wonderful. Inside of these, these blue bubbles where everyone's gone insane. Information bubble. I'm not saying your bubble. How they are, how they live their life, like their bubble. It's an issue because the bubbles have gotten so large and they're encompassing so many people now. And you're expected to have like a similar set of beliefs between all of these different people now that might live in totally different places. That's, I think, a, a big issue. <laughs> bubbles, 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 bubbles. They say it, but they never think of themselves being in the bubble. Hi, I'm Josh Noob. I'm a professor at Yale University, and I'm going to be talking about the notion of a true self. So let's begin with a classic case of a conflict between belief and emotion. Imagine a man named Mark, who has a belief that homosexuality is a sin. So he thinks that it's morally wrong for people to be with others of the same sex. And in fact, he travels the world preaching this message and teaching people techniques they can use to resist same-sex attraction. Based Mark. We don't need more homosexuals in the world. Just kidding. We're LGBT friendly channel. <laughs> but now imagine that Mark has a problem. Mark's problem is that he himself is actually gay. So on a kind of emotional, visceral level, he's drawn to be with other men. As a result, Mark is feeling a conflict between his beliefs and his emotions. Mm. And the question I want to ask now is, which of those two aspects of him is his true self? which is the part that really reveals who he himself most truly is deep down inside. When I say there's like a core self in all of us, I believe that. And again, it's not about knowing, it's about believing and then knowing the difference between what you believe and what you know. So many of us, <clears throat> let's say Mark, <laughs> my gay brother Mark somewhere in the world is like, what? <laughs> is this about me? No, it's not about you. But this Mark here in this video, he has a bubble of belief he lives in. And then the bubble in which he has a relationship with his consciousness, all perception is like little mini bubbles to me. So here's the bubble of him and his orientation. And that bubble lives within the bubble of his own belief system that being gay is bad, right? And so those are like two bubbles that are, with their, are within conflict in, in perception to one consciousness. So here, different people might have different views. Some people might say, ultimately, your true self is constituted by your beliefs, by your reasoning, by your abstract thinking. So they might say, Mark's true self is a part of him that says that homosexuality is a sin. But then other people might have exactly the opposite view. They might say, your true self is constituted by your emotions, by your visceral desires, by your passions. And then they might say, Mark's true self is the part of him that's drawn toward being with another man. So I was talking about this question with two of my colleagues, so for the record, growing up as a Roman Catholic, they would say either there's no such thing as a gay person and you don't know that you're straight, or they would say there is such a thing as a gay person, but because you're Catholic, you're going to deny the gayness and live a celibate life dedicated to God. So it's funny that even within Catholic bubbles, there are different types of Catholics and therefore different types of relationships you can have with this idea of gayness. And I think that is so fascinating, right? The idea is like, is my, are my beliefs who I am or is there an internal consciousness? Now, I personally think it's a little bit of both, but fundamentally, when I ask you, who are you? I'm asking you, who are you outside of your beliefs? I'm asking, who are you as a consciousness? Not because of who you vote, but because of the relationship you're having with the self. Who you vote for is not who you are. Like your skin color is not who you are. I believe there is like a consciousness, call it a soul if you would like, right? Call it a soul if you would like. But I think there's a real you that exists. And then there's the you who has opinions and those opinions are usually how you vote or the relationship you're having to how people perceive your skin color, which is different than who you literally are, right? Snowfire says, I never thought about your beliefs being the real you. Bubble pop, exact, bubble pop, right? Bubble pop. For a lot of people, they are their beliefs. And for some people, they are more than their beliefs. It, it's the most fascinating thing to figure out, like, who are you and what relationship and which category do you fit into of type of person? He's presenting us with two different types of people who perceive the same thing two different ways. And then what if you are another type of person who's not even involved in the list he's making. That's why when I say you have to be a whole human being, I think in order to find like purpose and joy and meaning, one of the five requirements in my world 
is who you are in the anime. Which ver which trope, which category of person are you? George Newman and Paul Bloom. And we began thinking, maybe people's ordinary notion of the true self doesn't really fit with either of these so two. So I'm going to write that just so we can see the beginning of that thought. Self is the part of him that's drawn toward being with another man. So I was talking about this question with two of my colleagues, George Newman and Paul Bloom. And we began thinking, maybe people's ordinary notion of the true self doesn't really fit with either of these two conceptions. Instead, maybe people's ordinary notion of the true self is shaped in a really fundamental way by their value judgments. So maybe, when people are thinking about your true self, what they do is to think about which aspect of yourself is the valuable one, the good one, the mm -hmm. one where... That's a big part of it as well. Now, I will say there are people I meet, and I say they are, I would call them fundamentally like twos, but also a category of a type of two. So I would say the reason introspection is so difficult for people is because in order to be introspective, they would have to question what they believe. And for a lot of people, what they believe is who they are, specifically like religious people. What they believe is who they are. So in order to be introspective enough to ask themselves who would they be without this belief is a threat to shattering the belief that they feel identifies who they are. And if they are to shatter that belief and therefore who they are, well, that's very scary. And who wants to do that, right? Who wants to reconfigure who they are, especially in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s? So when people say, oh my gosh, why can't people just change their minds? Why can't people change their beliefs? Um, Because you're asking them to change who they are or the relationship they have with the consciousness and who they think they are. It's a very big ask of people, which is why I practice letting go of the attachment of wanting people to change because who am I to make such a big request of people, right? When it was so fundamentally hard for me to even do the same. Worth preserving. So to see whether this is right, we conducted an experimental study. One group of participants was just given the exact case of Mark that I just gave to you. But then we wanted to know whether people's value judgments affected people's answers to this question. So we recruited two different groups of participants liberal participants and conservative participants. And what we found was a striking difference. Look at this, how beautiful the bubbles are in display and the bias is in display and it's not even a bad thing, but just look how it observes or how it ends up happening and then ask yourself, do I observe this in myself? And you're prob you should say yes. If you're introspective, you should know in which ways you are doing this. Because this is what I mean when I say we all end up in bubbles. Even me, it's just a bubble I've constructed. But why have I constructed this bubble? Because everybody holds bias and prejudice. The question is, have you identified clearly which one you are? Because this notion of I'm a free thinker, I think better than everyone else, I'm independent, no one tells me how to think. You sure about that? You sure about that? Check this out. He, like he said, he had two groups, conservatives and Democrats or Democrats and Republicans, and ask them the same story about Mark and his true self. What do you think they said? So the conservative participants tended to say that Mark's belief was part of his true self. That his belief that homosexuality was morally wrong was in some sense the voice of his true self speaking to him. The liberals tended to say exactly the opposite. They said that that belief was not part of his true self, and that his true self was actually constituted by his emotions or his desires or his passions, the part of him that was drawing him to be with another man. So looking just at that first result, you get at least some evidence that people's judgments about the true self are in some way shaped by their value judgments. But to see whether this is really true, we recruited a separate group of participants who received the reverse of that first case. So these group of participants were told about a person who believes that people of all sexual orientations should be treated equally. So he thinks that it's morally wrong to in any way discriminate against gay people. And in fact, he travels the world preaching this message and teaching people techniques they can use to resist their prejudice against homosexuals. However, this person has a problem. His problem is that he himself has these negative emotions toward gay people. So he himself finds himself feeling disgust toward homosexuals. And as a result, he also is faced with an inner conflict. A conflict between his beliefs and his emotions. Mm -hmm. Here too, we find a difference, but this time it's in the opposite direction, as it were. So the liberal participants tend to say his belief that people of all sexual orientations should be treated equally, that is the voice of his true self speaking to him. 
By contrast, the conservative participants say that belief isn't his true self at all. His true self is revealed by this emotion he has, this disgust toward gay people. So looking now at the whole pattern of results, what we see is it's not that people always think that your beliefs are your true self, and it's not that people always think that your emotion is your true self. Rather, what seems to happen is that people pick out whichever part of you they regard as the good part, the valuable part, the part worth preserving. They think that that is your true self. But now, these experimental results leave us with a question at a more philosophical level. The question is, should we think of this fact about people's judgments as just showing a bias or a distortion, a mistake they're making? Or should we think that it's actually revealing something fundamental about the very concept of a true self? Okay, great video. I think in so many ways it summarizes what I've been working on, but again, I'm not some person who's gone to university. I'm not a person who's like very deeply educated. I'm not a person, I'm just a curious girl on a planet that's read thousands of books and watched thousands of videos and tried to figure out who am I? What does it mean to be Brittany? Who is this person, right? And then what I did is I observed the world around me and I went through this lived experience and then I started documenting this experience and then I started talking about it on the internet. And then, oh, wait, these people are actually studying it. Oh, and these people are writing books about it. Oh, these people are having that same experience, but they're using different words than I'm using. We all use the word bubble. In my online bubble, everything's wonderful. Inside of these these blue bubbles where everyone's gone insane. Information bubble. I'm not saying your bubble. How they are, how they live their life, like their bubble. It's an issue because the bubbles have gotten so large and they're encompassing so many people now and you're expected to have like a similar set of beliefs between all of these different people now that might live in totally different places. That's, I think, a, a big issue. <laughs> bubbles, 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 bubbles. They say it, but they never think of themselves being in the bubble. They never think about how they are impacted by the bubble. When I catch myself saying something, I'm like, hmm, which bubble was that? Was that my childhood bubble talking? Was that the me talking? Was that this talking? It takes me a long time sometimes to recognize like, okay, which part of me is speaking right now? Which part of Brittany is talking right now? Am I work Brittany right now? Am I like, ooh, fascinated by philosophy Brittany? As much as they want to paint me as the bubble girl who's so silly and so sweet and Brittany's so stupid and her bubbles, they can't help but use it in their vocabulary because everybody does. But they don't hear how important it is to recognize you're in the bubble. That's what the bubble is. So again, I think it's interesting to see people say like, that's so silly, but here, are Yale, people at Yale, working on the same thing? And I think that's interesting. I think we all live in bubbles, and I think those bubbles are a perception and our relationship to that perception. And then we form collectives and groups based off our categorization that overlap or see each other, and then we form societies and identities and belief systems, all of that. Phoenix says, I think you've answered this before. Are you religious? No, I was born and raised Catholic, Roman Catholic, immigrant parents from Iraq. And then I became an atheist at 19 and left the church. And I bubble hopped. I went from the Catholic bubble, the Republican bubble, to the Republican atheist bubble, to the atheist liberal bubble, to the progressive bubble, to this bubble, to this bubble, to this bubble, to this bubble, until I realized like, I gotta make my own bubble, bro. Because none of these bubbles quite fit my beliefs. I can't fit prettily in any of these little bubbles. But you see how people do? You see how people's answers change the moment their, their version of the world needs to be clarified? See how you had these Republicans and Democrats and both of their opinions change to fit a narrative versus asking the question that I think is quite profound. Are you your thoughts or are you that deepness within you? It depends. And I would say you should align those two things. That the truest version of you is the person that is in line physically and mentally. Sometimes I'll say the real me isn't me when I'm hungry or me when I'm drunk or me when I'm sleep deprived. And someone would say, no, that's always the real you because you're always every version of yourself. But when I say it's not the real me, I'm saying it's not the version of me that is in line with my thoughts and my feelings, the internal and external. When I am the truest me, I'm in line externally and internally. So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine. Nothing you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense. I've been nothing but blessed. So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm okay. I'm just fine
things out Sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, da, 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 da,